It's my pleasure to introduce the next uh, session uh, on aging and diabetes. We have four talks, also 15 minutes each. Please, uh, speakers, um, uh, stick to your time. Uh, first one is Ram Nagraj from the Department of Ophthalmology and Visual Sciences. Um, the talk is Inflammatory Cytokines Induce the Expression of Indolamine 2,3-Dioxygenase in Human Retinal Capillary Endothelial Cells, Implications for Diabetic Retinopathy. Our distinguished speaker, Dr. Ram Nagaraj. The work I'm presenting today was all done by uh, Manish uh, Malinkot. He's, uh, he's done an incredible job in my lab. He was uh, in my lab for two and a half years. So he's back in India. He has two jobs in India. One is uh, as a professor in a medical school and in a biotech company in the evening. So m only Manish can do those kinds of things, I think. So well, he's done a lot of work. I'm presenting to you today uh, the work that we submitted to Journal of Biological Chemistry is being reviewed. Um, um, this is a work on human retinal endothelial cells. <laughs> Okay, before I go on any further, I would like to thank the people who helped us uh, with this project. Uh, Don Smith with Cell Culture, uh, Scott Howell with Microscopy, Catherine Dollar with Histology, and the funding from ASF Professorship and the uh, core grant, uh, RPB and Wahai Alliance Eye Research Foundation. So um, in diabetic retinopathy, one of, the, one of the earliest changes you can see in humans as well as in animal models of diabetic retinopathy is this acellular capillaries. Capillaries in the retina become acellular. That means their cells, endothelial cells in pericytes die of um, apoptosis. So this, this retina here becomes ischemic, then that leads to further complications. So we are trying to study how the retinal cells, capillary cells, endothelial cells, and pericytes die in diabetes. So the work is on the present, The work I'm presenting to you today is on endothelial cells. So. Uh, Manish had been studying this pathway called the kynurenin pathway, which is uh, triggered by inflammatory cytokines. This is um, a, a pathway that is initiated by an enzyme called indolamine 2 3 dioxygenase, or IDO. <clears throat> so this uh, uh, catalyzes the uh, oxidation of tryptophan into formal kynurenin. So A is the indolamine 2, 3 dioxygenase, and cytochrome B5 is the cofactor here. And then this kynuronin becomes uh, L-kynuronin, formal kynuronin becomes L-kynuronin, and that is converted to 3-hydroxykynuronin by this enzyme, uh, kynuronin 3-hydroxylase. I would like to you to uh, keep this in mind, these two enzymes, because we are going to in use inhibitors for these two enzymes, this enzyme and this enzyme, to block this pathway in the diabetic retina, or uh, in the retinal endothelial cells. So um, as I told you before, the enzyme is triggered by or induced by interferon gamma and also TNF-alpha and IL-1 beta. And when interferon gamma binds to its receptor, you have the activation of JAK-STAT pathway. And just this leads to uh, STAT dimerizing and going into the nucleus and bind to, um, um, uh, binding to the uh, DNA and activating a bunch of enzymes, including uh, IDO. So in the retina, uh, if you see the capillaries of the retina, this is a flatbed, uh, the, the, the trips and digest of the capillaries in the retina, you can see like this. And the microglia in the retina uh, are very in, are in close proximity to the blood vessels of the capillaries. So some of the yellow spots here, these are the co-immunolocalization of microglia and the retinal capillaries. So they're in close <laughs> physical contact. And this is important because as we go further into this study, um, I think the source of inflammation inflammatory cytokines in the diabetic retina is probably uh, either the microglia or the Mueller cells. So um, one of the first things uh, Manish did was to see whether this enzyme, IDO, is expressed in the human retina. So 
You see, this is non-diabetic human retina and diabetic human retina. This is the IDO activity. As you can see, there is a significantly increased activity of the enzyme in the diabetic retina. So then he did the Western blot. You can see the control non-diabetic retina and the diabetic retina. You can already see a huge increase in the diabetic retina, even at the expression level. Then he did the immunocytochemistry. This is really interesting. Scott helped him with this. Um, he stained the retina for an, for an endothelial cell marker, PKM1 or CD31. You can see the endothelial cells in the retinal retina uh, light up with this uh, uh, antibody. Then she also did the IDO. Lo and behold, this low IDO overlaps with the um, uh, immunostaining for PCAM1, suggesting that the enzyme activity is primarily present in the endothelial cells of the capillaries. <clears throat> And he also stained for an interferon gamma receptor 2 uh, that also stains at the endothelial cell, uh, in, the, in, the, in the endothelial cells and co-localizes with the PCAM1. So again, suggesting that both IDO and the interferon gamma receptor 2 are present in capillary endothelial cells in the human uh, retina. Now if we switch over to the cells. Uh, HREC cells are the human retinal endothelial cells. Don helped us with the uh, isolation of these cells and culturing of, culture of these cells. Now these cells we have to we had to characterize to make sure that we are working with the endothelial cells. There's a PCAM1 antibody showing that the cells are endothelial cells, and this is just the DAPI for nucleus. And also he did the acetyl LDL, LDL for the scavenger receptor. You can see both uh, both this uh, staining uh, staining for these two are positive for endothelial cells. And this is the uh, Western blot for interferon gamma receptor 2. Uh, HeLa cells were used as positive control, and HREC, you can see, uh, they have the interferon gamma receptor 2. And this is just an immunofluorescence to show that uh, receptor is there in, this, in these cells. Now, if you incubate these cells under high glucose environment, like in diabetes, you, you see an upregulation of the interferon gamma receptor 2. Okay. Um, and you can do that with mannitol, that the osmotic control, if you do some of the effects that you see in cell culture could be a, uh, because of osmotic uh, effects when you have lots of glucose, but that's not the case here. So uh, this is, I'm going to show you a bunch of slides that are pretty busy, but I, want, I would like you to concentrate just on these two here where I have the red arrows. Um, what he did then was to incubate these cells under high glucose environment and add some of, uh, a little bit of interferon gamma. Again, we are working with physiological concentrations of interferon gamma. These are not too high. So you can see interferon gamma here from all the way from zero to five units per ml. And high glucose where you have plus is where you have the high glucose in, with the endothelial cells. You can see in the absence of high glucose, you have this much induction of hydroactivity, but if you have high glucose, you have an additive effect here. That means high glucose somehow sensitizes retinal endothelial cells for interferon gamma effect, for the interferon gamma effect. So, we couldn't do that with uh, either L-glucose, which, which is a metabolic control, or D-mannitol, which is an osmotic control. You, 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 you don't get the same effect. That means this effect is specific for high glucose, that's D-glucose. So then he went on to um, um, dissect the pathway and then just to confirm whether this is due to JAK-STAT, uh, this uh, signaling. Um, indeed, when you add interferon gamma to retinal endothelial cells, you have the activation of uh, JAK, the JAK, uh, JAK one's JAK-STAT pathway, and you can inhibit that pathway by um, this enzyme STAT, uh, this inhibitor, STAT inhibitor, then that completely um, prevents the activation of this enzyme IDO, clearly confirming that the activation of IDO occurs through this signaling pathway. Then he also uh, looked at the kineurinins that are the products of this uh, enzyme in, in cells. You can see in animals per million cells, all those uh, products of the tryptophan metabolism are uh, increased in these cells. And if you have high glucose, uh, in addition to the interferon gamma, you have an additive effect again. There's more of these kineurinins uh, in endothelial cells. 
So when these kinurinins are produced in cells that bind to proteins, we have uh, developed two monoclonal antibodies that recognize specifically these uh, modified proteins, and you use those uh, monoclonal antibodies to show that indeed when you have when you add interferon gamma to uh, H track, you have kinurinins binding to cytosolic proteins that is shown here in this. And that is, again, an enhanced in the presence of high glucose. So we also did the um, uh, cell cycle and uh, as a, um, analysis by flow cytometry, and he showed that uh, when you have when, when you have interferon gamma with uh, uh, H rec, you have cells being arrested at sub G1, or there is no they are not going through the cell cycle. You can see here as we increase interferon gamma concentration, you have more num more uh, cells in this uh, sub G1 phase, and you have these two inhibitors. This one empty is an inhibitor for IDO, and R R061, which is an inhibitor for 3-hydroxylase, that is the enzyme that hydroxylase kinurinin, both of them prevent this uh, cell cycle arrest. That means it's, it's clearly um, IDO-mediated. So then he looked at the cell's uh, apoptosis, um, uh, whether apoptosis is occurring in these cells. Before that, he did the caspase measurements, caspase 3 and caspase 9. This is caspase 3 and this is caspase 9. And both of them are increased um, uh, with uh, interferon gamma, and you have high glucose. Again, there is an, uh, an additional increase, and both of that can be um, uh, prevented by uh, having these two inhibitors, MT and R0. You can see there's nothing there. Um, so again, suggesting that uh, 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 this caspase activation occur, it was occurring through um, I, um, IDO activation. Then um, she looked at, um, oh, before that, I think she had an apoptosis. Oh, apoptotic cells here. So this caspase 3, caspase, three and caspase nine, and this is um, percentage apoptotic cells. You can see again, uh, if, you add, had, if you have interferon gamma in cell culture, you can induce apoptosis in HREAC, but you can prevent that by um, either MT or R061. Again, it's all clearly um, implicating IDO in interferon gamma-mediated apoptosis of HREAC. Then he looked at the mechanism of apoptosis, why it is occurring. And he used an inhibitor called Tempol, which is a reactive oxygen species quencher. If you uh, add that, then there is, um, the, uh, you can inhibit apoptosis induced by interferon gamma. So this, is the, uh, this was done because 3 hydroxykinurinin one of the products, uh, binds to metal ions and can generate reactive oxygen species, uh, which is shown here, which, you know, so that hydroxyl radical generated can kill cells. I think that's the mechanism by which interferon gamma uh, kills retinal endothelial cells. Now, he also showed that TNF alpha, in addition to uh, interferon gamma, um, can synergistically induce IDO in HREC. This is very important for the uh, in, di in the diabetic retina because you have both TNF alpha, and you have TNF alpha, IL1, IL1 beta, um, and uh, interferon gamma are elevated. So he wanted to see whether there is a synergist synergistic effect. As you can see, if you have TNF alpha and interferon gamma together, you have a large increase uh, in um, IDO activity which is the western blot here. And, um, again, this is together, these two uh, interferon gamma and TNF alpha together. Again, if you have these two together, you have, you make lots of kinurinins in uh, a track, so which is shown here. Interferon gamma, TNF alpha together, huge increase. And even apoptosis, if you measure, if you have these two cytokines together, TNF alpha and interferon gamma, you can see a huge increase in apoptosis, but both of that can be blocked by uh, IDO, the IDO pathway inhibitors, MT and R061. So in summary, IDO and interferon gamma receptor, two are present in the human retinal capillary endothelial cells. 
Interferon gamma induces the expression of IDO in interferon gamma receptor 2. Interferon gamma induced IDO expression is exaggerated by high glucose, suggesting that high glucose, um, suggesting HD, high glucose mediated sensitization of HREC for interferon gamma mediated damage. Uh, high glucose also ex exaggerates interferon gamma mediated kinurin information, interferon gamma mediated reactive oxygen species formation, interferon gamma mediated cell cycle arrest, and interferon gamma mediated apoptosis. And TNF alpha and IL1 beta with interferon gamma synergistically induce IDO and bring about apoptosis of HREC. And the conclusions are inflammatory cytokine mediated induction of IDO could be a major pathway for retinal capillary endothelial cell apoptosis in the diabetic retina. The kinurin pathway could be a target for prevention of vascular abnormalities in the diabetic in, in, in diabetic retinopathy. Now we have made um, we have a knockout animal for the IDO from Jackson Lab. We have uh, made those animals diabetic, and after eight months of diabetes, we have given those retinas or the eyes to. Tim Kern for uh, his lab to evaluate whether uh, in the absence of the enzyme um, there is uh, prevention or inhibition of uh, uh, capillary, capillary degeneration in diabetic retinopathy. And that's, that's it. Thank you. Yes. Thankfully, we are measuring now. One of the, that, was, that was one of the questions uh, from the reviewers. Um, there are plenty of evidence that gamma, gamma interferon, <laughs> maybe the thing. Um, the, there's plenty of evidence that it is there, but the effect of diabetes, there's not a whole lot in the literature, uh, whether that is upregulated or not. So we need to sort that out before I can answer the question. Pardon me? Does Tim show that in any of his animal models? No, that's, uh, that's not in the radar skin when people do inflammatory cytokines, usually it's TNF alpha, IL1 beta, but uh, Arup Das um, is, is an expert on diabetic retinopathy when he showed his, uh, when he presented his data at a meeting in Bethesda last year, he showed that interferon gamma is upregulated in the, in, in the retina of diabetic mice. And uh, Alan Stitt was here a couple of weeks, a few weeks ago, he uh, told me the same thing. What in particular in the kynurenin pathway is the event that leads to caspase activation and apoptosis? Um, we believe it's the 3 hydroxykinurenin If you block the formation of 3 hydroxykinurenin you can prevent the, everything that is below, you know, like caspase activation and apoptosis. But by what mechanism would the 3 hydroxykinurenin do that? Oh, it produces uh, hydro hydroxyl radicals. Um, if you prevent the hydrox, that was uh, the DIMPO experiment that I did, DMPO, that can block apoptosis.